All right, this video is for the day one matter lecture. Um, mainly, matter, by definition, has two main characteristics. One being that it has mass, and the other is that it takes up space or has volume. Now, hopefully by now, if something has mass and something has volume, then we should also know that everything that is matter also has a density. So, without even realizing it, you have... Um, already learned of one of the basic characteristics of matter. Okay, now the um, simplest unit. Okay, so the simple unit of matter, simple matter unit, or the smallest piece of matter, we call atoms. Now I'm sure you guys from, remember from biology, an atom consists of a proton a neutron, and an, elec oops, an electron. So I, this is all um, shorthand. Proton showing that it's positively charged. Neutron showing that it has no charge with not. And then um, lowercase e, electron, being negatively charged. Now, all atoms, okay, all atoms which consist of protons, neutrons, electrons, can be characterized by a name. Okay? So those names are going to be dependent on the number of protons that each atom has. So for example, an atom that has three protons is lithium. An atom that has five protons is boron. An atom that has um, 47 is silver. So the names silver, lithium, boron, those are the elements' names. So the names of elements. That's how we classify or characterize the different types of atoms, and we call them elements. And they include, they include metals, such as silver and gold and even mercury, which is a liquid at room temperature. And then, of course, there's also nonmetals. And nonmetals can include carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Okay, Those three elements right there in the right proportions makes glucose, sugar, which is vital for our um, survival. All right, the next thing we're going to talk about is when we have those atoms that are elements, classified as elements, when those different atoms from those elements are combined in some way. Now, I'm being very uh, careful on how I say combination because um, in many cases, the combination, there's different degrees of combination. We're going to have um, attracted, okay, so atoms that are attracted to each other, okay, and we're going to have atoms that are actually linked together, meaning they have a, um, a particular type of bond. So how I'm associating two atoms being attracted to each other or two atoms being linked together is going to be in the type of bond that we're learning about. In this case, um, I'm sure you guys remember from biology as well, the two types of bonds that you learned were ionic and covalent. Attracted atoms usually have ionic bonds, and when they're linked together, they're covalent bonds. Now, this is going to become very important because you'll soon learn that all compounds and all molecules, um, they're, they're not inter th those two words are not interchangeable. Okay? Something can be a molecule and not a compound, and at the same time, something can be a compound but not a molecule. But then there's other examples where you can be a compound and a molecule. So we'll go into each individual uh, case uh, with the um, after the definitions. So the first definition being of compounds. Compounds are made from atoms of two or more different elements. So an example of a compound would be carbon dioxide. Okay. Now these different okay, that little number right there that's known as a subscript. And it tells you how many atoms of that particular element are in that compound. When there is no subscript there, then the implied number is 1. 
So in this carbon dioxide, there are three atoms. Two of those atoms are from the element oxygen, and one of those atoms is from carbon. Okay, But because I have two, in this case two, different elements, and I have a combination of them, that right there is a compound. Now you'll learn later that it's also a molecule, and when we talk about that definition, you'll see why. But another example would be, say, sodium chloride. Sodium chloride. Now, a, a way that you can distinguish how many um, elements there are without having to look at a periodic table, or if you don't have a periodic table available to you, is all elements on the periodic table have one thing in common, and that is they only contain one capitalized letter. Okay, whether they just contain a capitalized letter like carbon and oxygen, or they contain a capitalized letter with a lowercase letter in the case of sodium and chlorine. Now, so here I have two elements, which means this is a combination of a sodium atom and a chlorine atom, and they become sodium chloride. Now, the combination of these two things results in a compound. But, like I said, when you see uh, the definition of molecule, you'll soon find out that sodium chloride is a compound, but it is not a molecule. So, a key difference here between carbon dioxide and sodium chloride is the bond that holds sodium chloride together is an ionic bond, and the bond that holds uh, carbon dioxide together is a covalent bond. As far as how are you supposed to determine which compounds contain covalent bonds and which compounds contain ionic bonds or covalent bonds, I'll tell you. Okay, I'll just say carbon dioxide is a covalent compound. Sodium chloride is an ionic compound. I'll let you know what those are ahead of time. Later on in the year, you'll be able to determine if it's ionic or covalent just by looking at the periodic table. All right? So another example of a compound would be, let's see, how about okay, hopefully that looks familiar. That is glucose, all right? That's uh, sugar that um, plants are going to produce during photosynthesis. This right here is a compound by definition because it has three, there, in this case, it has three different elements here. And if you wanted to count the number of atoms in each one, there's six carbon atoms, there's 12 hydrogen atoms, and there's six oxygen atoms. So this right here is a compound. It's made, it's a, it's a collection of atoms that's made from more than just one type of element. Okay, so a molecule is made from two or more atoms of different or of the same element. Okay, so an example here, um, a molecule that is made up of two or more from two or more atoms from a different element. Let's go back to carbon dioxide. Okay, now carbon dioxide. There's two different elements there. It's a combination of two or more atoms. In this case, there's three atoms. But the reason why this is a molecule is because the carbon and the oxygen are covalently bonded. And like you said, I will tell you if it's covalently bonded at this point. Sodium chloride is ionically bonded, which means it does not apply to the definition of a molecule. So a sodium chloride is not, sodium chloride compound is not a molecule. Okay. C6H12O6, glucose, it is both a molecule and it's a compound because it's compound because there's three different elements, but it's also a molecule because these all these atoms happen to be bonded covalently. Hydrogen gas okay, composes most of the universe. Hydrogen gas is a molecule, but it is not a compound. It's not a compound because it's not made from different elements. It's only made from one element. But it just so happens that this um, molecule, okay, because it is, if you look over the definition, it's made from the same element. It's two hydrogen atoms. And since those two hydrogen atoms are bonded together by a covalent bond, we call it a molecule. Now here's the thing. When you have a molecule that is made of two or more atoms from the same element, you could also call it an element. 
H2, O2, N2, okay, um, S8, any of those, okay, P4. Those are all compounds, I'm sorry, those are all molecules that are made of one element, and since they are only made of one element, we can also call them elements, not just molecules. Now, when it comes to something like uh, zinc, it's a metal, okay? Zinc, because zinc and most metals, they only occur as, um, when they're in their elemental form, as just the symbol. They wouldn't have any subscripts, okay? Because most metal obviously does not contain just one atom. They contain, you know, billions upon trillions upon quadrillion um, and farther than that um, number of atoms. But we don't really put a number here. Okay? There's no reason to. We would just leave it as zinc or copper or nickel or anything. Okay? That's a metal. And like I said, later on you'll be able to identify what's a metal and what's not. Okay? So let's do a couple examples. All right, what I'd like you to do is identify these six samples as, it could be one or more things, atom, molecule, element, or compound, okay? Like we, we've seen in this video, some things can be molecules and compounds, some things can be molecules and elements, some things can be elements and atoms, okay? The only ones that you really can't uh, have is you can't have a compound be an element. That doesn't work, nor can you have a compound be an atom. Okay, so you can't have those. But all the other ones, you can have a molecule and an element. You can have a compound and a molecule. So go ahead, pause the video, give it a shot, and then I'll have the key for you when you unpause it. Oops, I almost forgot. Ammonia is covalently bonded, methane is covalently bonded, silver is not bonded at all, silver chloride is ionically bonded, uh, potassium sulfide is ionically bonded, and diatomic or elemental oxygen is covalently bonded. So now, give it a shot. Okay, go ahead and check your answers. If you have any questions, make sure you ask me in class.